for this opportunity to come again to worship, to give you praise and honor. Thank you, o Lord, for this day. And we ask for your presence with us. In Jesus' name. Amen. So before we send you to the table of time and offering,
Yes? What am I going to talk about today? Ah, so you can read. Awesome. Now before we start, let us pray. Dear kind and happy Father, Lord, I thank you for waking us up this morning. I thank you for all the showers of blessing you um, showered upon us this morning with the rain that the plants may get water to drink and we will also get water to drink, Lord. I pray that you fill this place with your Holy Spirit and may you speak through me, Lord, this morning. In your name I pray. Thanks be good. Amen. Amen. Alright, so what are commandments? What do you think commandments are, Naraya? What are commandments? Rules. Awesome. I love that definition. Commandments are rules. Our scripture reading for today is taken from Revelation 22, verse 14. 22, verse 14. Any of you have your Bibles? Really? Could you take that one, please? I know it's not customary anymore to bring Bible to church, but you know, we can start. It's taken from Revelation 22, verse 14. Revelation is the last book in the Bible. Try the last book. Alright. You can read with me. Blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter into the gate, into the city. What does it mean to be blessed? Do you know what it means to be blessed? What does it mean to be blessed? Darius. What do you think it means to be blessed? You don't know? If I said that you are blessed, what do I mean, Nathan? Okay, you have good things. You can go through good things. You often hear a person say you're blessed and highly favored. That's why you know, they say God is smiling on you. So basically you get a lot of things or you're talented. And the Bible promises us, promises us that once we obey his commandments, we will be blessed. And we will enter through the gates. What gates do you think they're talking about? Where do we all want to go? Yeah. Heaven, heaven's gates. Heaven's gates. Alright, so today I'm going to be telling, talking to you about the commandments. I'm going to be, you know, asking questions like, where did the commandments come from? Are they still valid now? Do they make sense? You know, stuff like that. So my first question, how did we get the Ten Commandments? Anyone who knows that in the, who's supposed to be that in the picture? Moses. So, we all know the story about how the Israelites were passed the Red Sea and they went through and they reached Mount Sinai. And God called Moses and Moses went up to meet him up in the mountains while everybody stayed behind. And the Bible says he communed with Moses, meaning he talked with him. And once he was finished, he wrote with his finger on tablets of stone, not paper, of stone. And he wrote the Ten Commandments for us to follow. Exodus 31 verse 18 says, And he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tablets of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. God actually valued us so much that he didn't tell someone to write it, he wrote it himself. You know how special you feel if somebody writes you a note and, and, and sends it to you? You know? It's like somebody wrote a note just for me. God wrote the commandments just for us. It continues to say in Exodus 32, 16, and the tablets were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God written upon the tablets. Now, if it is that somebody took the time to write down instructions for you, would you just throw it away? No, because somebody took the time to write it. And it was written with love. What if mommy decided that she's going to go to the store, but before she went to the store, she wrote down a list of things that you should do. Would you say, I'm not going to do any of those things? That's what you would say? No. No, why? What do you think would happen when mommy gets back home and you haven't done any things that she suggested? For instance, if she said, 
I would like you to clean your room, eat your food, wash up the dishes, and then go and have some rest. And when mommy comes back home, she finds you sitting in front of the television having done none of it. What do you think would happen? Okay. That would take away what? You'll get punishment. But do you think that mommy put those rules there because she wants to eat me? No, one of the rules was to eat. Do you think we need to eat to survive? Mm-hmm. We do. So, why did God give us the Ten Commandments? Why do you think God gave us the Ten Commandments? Yes. So we can live on that deep, deep response. I'll get back to that in a minute. What do you think? Alright, so let me give you a question. How many of you like toys? Okay, hands up. Say for Christmas, Daddy decides he's going to give you a nice robot. But you have to put the pieces when you open the box, you see about 20 pieces. How would you know what to do? What do you look for inside of the box? The ah, the instructions. And who do you think writes the instructions for the, for the, for the robot? The person who made it. Now, follow me for a moment. So the person who made the robot put instructions in the box of how to compile the robot and how it works. Suppose they told you have to use three batteries but you decide to use two. Will it work? No. no. Because the instruction says that it needs three batteries. What if they say to put two facing up and one facing down? Are you going to put all facing up? No. Will it work? No. Alright, so I'm going to do an activity now. Let's, sorry, let's do the text. Proverbs 3 verse 12 says, For whom the Lord has loved and corrects, just as the Father's Son in whom he delights. Now the rules are given for us so that we know the right way to go so we would avoid the wrong way. Just like how putting in the batteries, you don't want to put it in the wrong way because it will not work. But you want it to work. So we have to put it in the right way. Furthermore, the commandments are there not just to give us the right way, but the right way to wear. where. Where do we want to go ultimately? Where, where is the goal? What's the goal? To reach heaven, right? So we're going to Him. The Ten Commandments are a guide for us to reach Him. Alright, so I'm going to ask, can you come? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, Naraya. Come. We're going to have an activity. And before you embark on the activity, I want you to read the rules to me. So I have to come All right. What does the first rule say? Players must move up, down. All right. Players must move up, down, left, or right. So what can they not do? We can move. I know you all know how to play video games, right? So we move it up, we move it down, left and right, but we cannot move. Diagonally, right? Alright, the next rule. Players cannot stand on a red tie. And the last rule says players must move only one square at a time. So my task. This is a this is the start and your aim is to get to the safe zone. So you cannot stand on any red ones. You can only move once. You can only move up, down, left, or right. So you stand there. Stand here. You are going to tell him where to go. You have to tell him to go up, down, left, or right. And he can only move one step at a time. Remember what the rules are.
What if he was standing here and she said, no, in this case I'm facing it, so move to the left. Can I go to the left again? No. What do the rules say? You cannot go on a red tile, so I will have to go back down. Then I go forward. Up, up, left. Can I go back? Can I move all the way over to this way? No, you cannot go diagonally. So the rules are here for us to follow in order to reach the safe zone. Where is our safe zone? Jesus. Jesus and heaven. So we are given rules in order to help us reach heaven. Alright? Does the law save us? Does the law save us? Let's show hands. Does the law save us? Who thinks the law saves us? Mm -hmm. Alright, so I'll give you a demonstration. I need Nathan, you can come and join us. Once we know the law, we will be able to identify sin and get to a savior. 
All right, so I will ask one, two, Naomi, this one, Naomi Adams. Mm -hmm. Let me explain what I mean. Yes.
the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and do what? Come, fear God and do what? Keep his commandments for this. This is the whole duty of man. Now, fearing this text does not mean to be afraid of. It means to honor and to respect God. Matthew 5 verse 17 continues. Do not think that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill. So Jesus, when Jesus came, he didn't come to say, well, we don't need to come out anymore. On the contrary, he came so that we can believe and know for sure that that is the plan for us. So I have a question. When I was growing up, everybody always said, change is the only thing that's constant. Because we grow, we mature, we get older, we get bigger. Nothing stays the same. But my question is, does God ever change? No. How do you know? Does God ever change? No. So, there's a text that I absolutely love in Hebrews that says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. That text comforts me because back in Bible times, when it says that the Israelites and those who, when they were going through things and they prayed to God, God showed up. God showed up for them. So do you think that when you're going through your troubles, what will God do? He will show up for you because God does not change. God does not change. Malachi 3 verse 6 says, For I am the Lord, I change not. Isaiah 40 verse 8 says, The grass with the the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Don't let people try to tell you that commandments don't need to be called anymore, or Jesus already died for our sins, so we don't have to follow the law. That is not the case. The Bible clearly states that we are to follow God's laws. Now, I have a hard question. Who knows all Ten Commandments in order? Mm, I don't see plenty of hands now. All Ten Commandments in order. Alright, so what I'll do, I'll go through all the commandments and then I'll ask you that again. See if we can get a prize to give it away. Alright, so let's go. We're going to use our Ten items coincidence, or maybe not. How many fingers do you have? Ten. So it's not that hard to learn. So we'll start with the first four. The first four deals with our relationship with God, how we relate to God. The first, how many? Four. The first four commandments tells us how we should relate to God, and the next six commandments tells us how we should relate to each other. All right, so let's go. Number one, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Let me hear you. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Number two, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. What's number two? Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Number three, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God. You know what that means? Anybody? It's a, it's, it's a word that begins with S. Do not. Do not curse God or do not swear. Do not swear. Do not call the Lord's name in vain. Don't just say. So you know sometimes. I'll give you an example. If, if you're at home and mommy decides to say. Naomi, Naomi, and you come to mommy, and mommy's like, oh, I don't want you to do anything. And you go back to play, and then mommy is like, Naomi, Naomi, you come back, oh, I didn't want you to do anything. Is that annoying? Yes. It is annoying. So you know, like sometimes you do something, and all of a sudden you call on the name of the Lord, but you don't want him. Right? So you like to. What, what we tend to do, we tend to use it in vain where we constantly call and name with God, but it's not called to ask God for anything or to give Him praise. It's said in disgust. Like something dropped on the floor, we call the Lord's name in vain. In vain, you don't want Him to do anything, you don't want Him to praise Him, you're just calling His name. 
So the devil has put in our minds that we can just call the name of the Lord without having a request or having a praise. And that is why we say you call the Lord's name in vain, more like a curse. Right? So we're not to do that. And the last one says, we should all know this one. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But of the Lord thy God. Very good. Alright, so let's see if we can do the first one. Let's one hand. Alright, so we have a fist. First one. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Number two. Thou shalt not make unto me any graven image. Number three. Thou shalt not call I'm not hearing you, thou. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Alright, so we're going to go to relating to others. Now this one is my favorite one because I have children. And it says, Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. A shortened version is, Honor thy father and thy mother. What does that mean? What does it mean to honor your parents? Be respectful, I like that. Respect them. There's another word besides respect. We get the bow. Obey them. It also means to show kindness to them. Be helpful, be kind, be obedient. All of these things honor your parents. Number six. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. What does that mean? Thou shalt not take the life of someone else. Now, to me this one is pretty obvious because did you give life to anyone? No. Then you should not take life from anyone. Number seven. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Now what this means is once you get older and you get married, you shall remain faithful to that one person all the time. You don't spread your love around well, you can be friendly, but yeah. Number eight. Thou shalt not steal. Now this one, for small children, sometimes is a problem because you see snacks on the table and you don't have a snack today. What do you do? Ask. You're supposed to ask someone for it, but what if no one is around? But no, if no one is around and it's not yours, we shall leave it alone because the Bible says thou shalt not steal. Stealing is taking something that is not yours without permission. Now what happens is when you start stealing from small, you then and you get away with it, you then try to steal again and again, and then it becomes a habit. And as you get older, that habit becomes hard to break, and then you go to become a thief. Mm. God will not be pleased with that. Number nine. Now this one some people think has gray areas. Hi, what's number nine? Hi. Number nine. Right, so I want you to focus here and not that him, right? Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. What does it mean to bear false witness? That's not a big term. Lie. Now don't put up your hand, but who lies? Now the sad reality is, most of us, if not all of us, lie for something or other. Now, the devil tries to fool us that they are just small lies. You call them white lies, all type of color lies. But we have to try as far as possible not to lie at all. So if it is that you don't want to get into trouble, you tell a lie. But then you know what happens? You have to tell another lie, and then another lie, and then it just spirals into very, very, very big dark lies. So the Bible tells us not to even start. Right? And the last one, thou shalt not covet. Do you know what it means to covet? Yes, 
Okay? It's not so much, it's not, it's not just not wanting what others have, but it's craving it so much that it consumes your mind and then you might end up doing what? Taking it. So it's like, oh my, look at that. Look at that toy. I really want that toy. And I wish I could have that toy. As soon as you leave, I'm going to take up that toy. And then you keep obsessing about the toy. And then you end up taking the toy. And it's like, oh, I have this toy. I'll just keep it. And then you walk away and you have the toy. So which means you broke one commandment, two commandments. And then when you're asked, where's the toy? I don't know. Three commandments. See the trend? So already in less than two minutes, you've broken three commandments. Coveting is wanting and craving after something that belongs to somebody else. Right? And we mustn't do that. So, these are ten commandments. Everybody remember the first one. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Number two. Okay, I'll take that. Number three. Thou shalt not follow uh the -huh. Number four. Number five. Number six. Thou shalt not kill. Number seven. Thou shalt not commit Number eight. Thou shalt not steal. Number nine. Now, where should we keep all of these commandments? In our hearts, but we must first remember them. You know, there may come a time when we would have our Bibles. I mean, obviously we didn't break Bible this morning, but if we commit all of these texts to memory, then nobody can take them away from you. They are in your mind. Now that reminds me of a, of a story. I love experiments, so this one is actually quite funny. What is this? Shrimp. Is the shrimp big or is the shrimp small? Small. Small. Where does it live? In the ocean. Shrimp live in the ocean. Now is the ocean big or is the ocean small? Big. So this is a tiny creature living in a big ocean. Right? Now when they have big waves and tides and those things. You think this is tossed? You think he gets tossed and turned? Yeah. yeah? All right, so six to eight times a year, he molds his skin. Now when he does this, he does something fantastic. When he does this, every time he molds his skin, he goes to the bottom of the sea and he gets a tiny grain of sand and he puts it right in. Right here on top of his head. And you know what it's for? That allows him to be able to know what is up and what is down. Because the, the, under the water, he's constantly tossed and turned. But once he has that tiny grain of sand, the pull of gravity allows him to be able to basically balance himself amidst all of the tide and turmoil of the sea. So we will call that grain of sand Sand, a status stone. What will we call it? Status. We'll call it a status stone. So he or she knows what is up from what is down and it helps orient them. Now there was an experiment done by some scientists. They collected a set of shrimp and put them in a big aquarium. Now remember what they do, they mold. And when they mold, they take up a grain of sand. But what the scientists did, they put tiny metal filings on the bottom of the aquarium. So when it was time for molten, the shrimp took up a tiny grain of metal at the top of their head, which they were trying to use to orient themselves. But you know what the scientists did? They got a big electromagnet and placed on top of the aquarium. And then they turned it on. You know what happened? All the shrimp flipped upside down. But of course, because everybody did it, they probably said to themselves, oh, nothing's wrong, just a little, just a little wave 
and everybody was good, but they were all what? Upside down. Now, to make it interesting, the scientists went and they got a shrimp from the ocean and then dropped them in, into the aquarium. Now, could you imagine the conversations? Oh my goodness, what's wrong with him? He's swimming upside down. I mean, who does that odd ball think he is? And I could hear the one that come in, what's wrong with you? Why are you all swimming upside down? Now, think of it. When it is that you have the word of God in your mind, that is your status soul. Now, when the devil turns on his electromagnet, um, when he turns on his magnet, magnet of temptation, getting young people to use drugs, and to drink alcohol, and to watch things they should not be watching, and engage in activities they should not be doing, because everybody else is doing it, you, you might think, oh my, I'm the one who's upside down. But remember, if you have the word of God as your status stone, that will show you amidst all the turmoil of this great sea of the world that we live in, which way is up and which way is down. The commandments show us the path that God wants to follow. Who created us? God. God, so he is the one that sent the instructions just like the inventors of robots, the tour that we were talking about at the beginning, just like they included the instructions for you to follow to know how it works well. God knows how we work well. God knows the best way for us to be successful and to live a good life. And that is why he gave us the commandments because the commandments guide us where to go. That is our status stone. And we should keep it where? In our brains. Once we write it in our brains, we will forever hold it in our hearts. And we will be able to balance ourselves in the turmoil of the world. If you have the word of God in your head and follow the commandments with your whole heart, you will know the right way to go. And where do we want to go? We want to go to heaven. If you want to go to heaven and you want to commit all of these commandments to mind, let's stand and pray that God grants us wisdom so that we are able to find our way to heaven. Let's stand and pray. All right, let's pray. Dear kind of Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for all of your blessings. I thank you for sending your commandments, Lord, to give us the instructions on a path to travel so that we are able to make it to your kingdom. Thank you for sending rules so that we can follow them to know and guide us which way it is to go. This is my prayer in thanksgiving. Amen. Have your seats. Now, to help you learn the commandments, I found a few
it because Captain Chu. 